he bites his fingers, and he, the guy goes, ah, like he, he's in pain, so he lifts his hands up, and then Puchinski proceeds to nom on the his his murderer's uh, peen and balls chat. Hello, I just wanted to thank you for clicking on my video, and I wanted to let you know, not only do I create content on my YouTube channel here, Class in the Glass, but I'm also on Twitch, where I play single-player games, multiplayer games, I do movie reviews, cartoon reviews, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Also, it would be a big help if you can check out my Patreon, where you can gain access to uh, audio commentaries, reactions, and the ability to submit questions for my podcasts and video casts. And all that content can be found in the links below. In the meantime, enjoy the video. The talking dog teams up with his astonished former partner to put the bite on crime. Chris, what the fuck is this thing about? I'm gonna tell you because this fucking opens up, chat. We're seeing the city. I guess I guess we're in Chicago because he mentions the Cubs game, chat. So we're in the we're in the middle of a fucking crime wave in Chicago, chat. These kids are running the goddamn streets, and the only one that can stop him, chat. The only one that can pummel them to near death, chat, is fucking Peter Boyle. This old the, Peter Boyle, by the way has never looked young his entire life. <laughs> he's he's maintained the same uh, hairstyle chat, just fucking bald, <laughs> just bald. Always looks like, I mean, I think the youngest he's ever looked was probably 50. I think that's the youngest he's ever looked, yeah. But he's always looked between the ages of 50 and like 85. Like, I have never seen a young picture uh, of, of, P of Peter Boyle. I, I don't think he had any youth. I think he was born that way, <laughs> which is great because he uses his great effect and many of the things he worked in, chat, whether it be Taxi Driver, whether it be uh, Young Frankenstein or uh, Los Raymond, chat. He plays a fantastic curmudgeon. And the thing is, Chad, he plays Stanley Puchinski. You know, he's running these goddamn streets. He's protecting the citizens of Chicago. He's protecting from themselves, Chad, and the youth who are, are tearing this place apart. But he is an invest... By the way, what's weird, Chad, is like he's like assigned to apparently every type of division in the goddamn show. This show uses the level of writing. Someone just like, okay, I'm going to do a cop show where it's the, the main character is going to be a dog. Uh, spoiler. Uh, but... It's it's written by someone who does doesn't understand the police work and the divisions of a police uh, uh you know a, a police department how you have individuals who work in vice who murder uh, or or whatever it might be chat and apparently Stanley Puchinski he he's a he's a he's a Renaissance man chat of crime because he works in every specific division which I'm like that doesn't make any fucking sense because he's talking about I I you know I caught this fucking serial killer to like oh I'm handling these drug dealers and vices like what how are you working on all of these cases. You're typically assigned a specific division. So it doesn't make any goddamn sense. Thank you, Dark Side with Five Bitties. He's a Benjamin Button, but he, does, he doesn't de-age. He's just born old, and he's just stayed that way. Which is like, okay. I mean, hey, man, that makes you a good character actor, I think. Work with what you got. Work with what you got. Even if you look at it, hey, fuck it. It's worked for goddamn uh, Steve Buscemi, chap. He's looked the way he has since he was born. Looked at like a Schmeagol monster. And he's, he's done great things, chap, looking like a Schmeagol monster. So he's, you know, he just finished a, a fucking case chat. Uh, him and his partner, his partner chat, who he doesn't like him, played by uh, George Newburn chat, plays the husband uh, in uh, Father of the Bride, the uh, the the guy who was um, gonna marry Steve Martin's daughter chat. That's the actor. That's probably what he's best known for in terms of films. He played the 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 would be husband in the in the first film and in the sequel chat. As we know in the sequel, he put a baby inside Steve Martin's daughter, and then Steve Martin he put a baby inside Diane Keaton, and they were both pregnant, and th th that was the movie. I think I never saw it, chat, but I assume that those are the, the events, and that's what it was. It focused on, chat, was the pregnancies of Diane Keaton and Steve Martin's daughter in that film, which George Newman was a part of, chat. He plays Detective McKay. He plays Detective McKay, and he doesn't like working with Peter Boyle. Chad. He doesn't like working with Stanley Puchinski. Uh, he's just he, he he doesn't follow the rules. Chad. As we know, Puchinski doesn't follow the rules, but he gets the uh, the job done. And he just got off a case work with Puchinski, and he just well, I just want nothing to do with him. He just wants get off my case, Puchinski. And Puchinski's like ah, I don't give a shit and so he goes uh, in, uh to a hot dog stand chat he gets himself a good old hot dog good old chicago dog chat of all the fixings so it has as i he has the pickle you have the chilies on there chat you have the onions the relish the mustard the ketchup it's it's the best thing ever chat that's when you get a Chicago hot dogs, which Chicago's best known for, chat. Not their terrible, awful, disgusting pizza soup. Some call Chicago pizza pie, chat. They call it deep dish pizza. It's pizza soup. It's the grossest thing ever. There's like a piece of, of frozen tomato sauce, like an ice cube in the middle, because they don't cook it all the way through, chat, because that's how the people in Chicago apparently like to eat it. So uh, he got himself a hot dog, chat, which is much better than deep dish. 
and he is observing this fucking gang of children, Chad, who look to be, uh, be a mixture of seven to maybe 21. <laughs> Just a gain of them, chat. And they're all beating the shit out of this dog in an alleyway. It's like, what the fuck is happening? What's going on? He's fucking, hi, oh, he's eating the hot, he's eating the hot dogs when he's yelling at him. He's like, hey, what are you kids doing? And it's like, the, this, the littlest of them, chat, the seven-year-old's like, the fuck you want, Peter Boyle? And he's like, hey, you don't talk to your elders that way. I'll talk to you how way I want. And he fucking pulls out a switchblade on him. <laughs> This little child, <laughs> the smallest of the chat, he, he's like, he rules the game, chat. Like, he fucking, he barely, he stabbed the leader, and they all crowned him. It's like fucking Lord of the Flies in Chicago, chat. What's happening in Chicago, goddammit? Oh, my God, these kids are murdering each other. And going after poor pooches, chat. Poor pooches. And Peter Boyle, he does not fuck around. He just take, he just pulls out his gun. He's like, oh, yeah, it's a nice knife you got. Look at this gun here. You know what? Sometimes I forget how to use this thing. I mean, I am just start pointing in certain directions and things. And I don't know, my hand gets a little twitchy. He's fucking threatening to kill these kids. <laughs> I'm like, I don't think you can do that. And so the kids go, whoa! And they run away, Chad. They're fucking terrified because they thought Peter Boyle, Puchinski, Chad. Stanley Puchinski's going to kill them. And he probably would have. He probably doesn't, he doesn't really give a shit anymore, Chad. He doesn't follow the rules, if you will. Dark Stanley with five days, so it's like Chicago Day. Yes, <laughs> it is like Chicago Day. I give him the seven-year-olds trying to stab people. Uh, but he wanders over, Chad. He wanders over to see what these kids are beating the shit out of. And it was this dog, Chad. It was this pooch. It was this, oh, this, the cutest English bulldog you can imagine. And you think Stanley Puchinski is going to be a hard ass. He doesn't give a shit. You know, he's cheating. His, he was treating his his partner, uh, Detective McKay, like shit, Chad. He threatened to murder these children in an alleyway in, in plain view, Chad. In plain view of everyone who was looking at that situation. But he warms up immediately to this dog. He's like, how you doing, buddy? You doing okay? And he's petting him. The dog's like, oh, he's licking his face. Like, oh, oh, oh let's give you a hot dog. And he fucking feeds the, 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 the dog the hot dog. And he's like, oh, you're the best. Oh, we ugly. He's like, we ugly guys got to stick together. <laughs> we need to find love in this world. And you, you and I, we're going to love each other. And he's this is new dog chat. And then we cut, and then we cut, and, you know, Detective McKay and Peter Boyle, they're in the car, they're exiting the fucking police car, chat. except, you know, McKay's like, I gotta go in the goddamn department and talk to the the, the, the angry black uh, police chief, chat. because, yes, they do have an angry black police chief. Matter of fact, the angry black police, uh, police chief, chat is played by Frank McRae, who was an ex-football player, also played the angry black police chief. In the last action hero, show. I'm like, I've seen this guy recently. He plays that character in, uh, in the last action hero, chat for Arnold Schwarzenegger. I was like, wait a minute. It's the exact same way. The exact same way, chat, and he is still awful. <laughs> He's still just the worst. He's not a good actor, Chad. Should have just stuck with football. Should have just started uh, stuck with announcing and talking about football, Chad. You're not an actor, buddy. Uh, but uh, good old McKay, he go, well, he goes inside, looks disgusted as Peter Boyle and the bulldog are just happy, enjoying themselves. And he goes and talks to the angry black police chief, Chad. And he walks in, and what, what, what do you, what, I'm going to ask you, Chad, how do you think the angry black police chief is feeling right now? What emotion do you think he has right now, Chad? I'm just, 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 I'm just asking. I'm curious. I'm curious. Let's get the first response. Angry. Chris Sears, you were correct. He's angry, Chad. He's angry. He's got a million fucking cases he's got to work on. Arnold's affair, uh, uh, internal affairs is right up his ass, Chad, because no cop uh, in his precinct is following the rules, Chad, except good old McKay. And McKay, he's done with it. He went to the police chief and says, listen, sir, I just want to talk about, uh, you know, the, 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 the recent changes, uh, you know, with, uh, with Puchinski. And he's like, oh, what's wrong? Well, it's it, it, it's 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 crazy. Um, I mean, he has that goddamn dog now, and I, I just can't stand the the I mean the smell and the farting and just the, the 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 complete lack of hygiene. He's like, you're talking about the dog. He's like, no, I'm talking about Stanley Puchinski. So apparently, Jeff uh, Peter Boyle, Stanley Puchinski, he just he's just. Farting, he's just smelly all the time, chat, and he's just he just does not practice personal hygiene, chat. So he's just reeks. I mean, that's why the fucking bulldog loves him so much, chat, because he's like, oh my god, you're like, I just want to roll him. And you know, how, like dogs, like they find like a really smelly thing, like a dead animal or something. 
and they just want to roll in it for some reason. I, I have no idea fucking why. This one be coated in the scent because they love it so much. That's apparently what Peter Boyle smells like. And the dog's like, yeah, give me all that, that, that Peter Boyle stink. And the angry uh, black police chief, he's saying, like, listen, all right, that's fucking Stanley Puchinski. He's a legend in this department. He caught the fucking mail bomber. He caught the panty serial killer. You know, he's he's caught all the major drug lords in Chicago. It's like, this guy's done a lot, apparently, chat. And he's telling... He's telling McKay, listen, you, you got to stick with this guy, okay? Uh, just, you know, the, the, a police, personal hygiene doesn't make a great detective. You can learn so much uh, from him, kid. So, you know, just, you know, stick out with it, just stick with it, and good things will happen to you. Good, all, listen, patience, good things come to those who are patient, to those who wait. And McKay's like, oh, God, I don't know, sir. He's like, listen, why don't you go ahead and do that stakeout with him tonight? They're trying to uh, catch the TM, the 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 uh, the ATM killer shit. He's all he does shit. This the ATM killer. It's the, it's the latest serial killer in uh, Chicago chat. Where he goes to ATMs and he stabs people. He stabs them and he takes their money chat and he walks away. And so they're trying to catch this guy. So we think we know what ATM he's going to be uh, going to. So you do a stakeout with, with uh, good old Pachinski and you'll you'll learn much from him, my child. And he goes, okay, great, uh, bye, chief. And so. We're out there later at night, chat, where Puchinski, he's farting and burping and all smelly and things, and he's talking to his dog, and McKay is just complete misery. Uh, and then, you know, uh, you know, Peter Bull is like, are you hungry? I'm fucking hungry. And he just orders the fucking pizza there, and we get an advertisement, chat. We get a commercial for Domino's where it's it's featured prominently in the shot. Like, the guy, like, even, he he's, like, holding it weird, like, in the window, like, you can see the box. I like, like, straight how you put it through a window, chat. He's, like, putting it through, like, um, like a like, like it's uh, the tall side and just putting it through the window. It's like, what the fuck is this about? And he he takes the pizza. People, people is like, oh boy, Domino's Pizza, America's favorite pizza. Are you fucking kidding me? And so he opens it up and he's disappointed shit. He's so disappointed because he's like, wait a minute, this is shrimp and pineapple. What is this crap? What is this health crap? And then he realizes, like, I don't have any money to pay for the pizza. Can you spot me at 20 McKay? McKay goes, sure, whatever. And he gives the the $20 to the the you know the, the pizza delivery boy chat, or man in this case. And the and the pizza delivery boy, man, he is the worst actor imaginable. He goes, oh boy, $20. And he just runs away. <laughs> didn't you didn't do change? Just fucking takes the money and runs. And McKay's like, what the fuck? And you know, Peter Bull, he's upset. He's like, ah, I can't eat this bullshit. And he fucking throws, he throws the slices of pizza at, at, uh, at the dog, Chad, the bulldog. And the dog says, this is, I'll eat this. this. This is delicious. This is delicious. And, but McKay, he's, he's just still, you know, so upset about the situation. He doesn't want to be a Puchinski. But Puchinski's just telling him, like, listen, man, you just got to relax. Don't you have, like, a lady in your life? I mean, I'm banging bras at every corner, man. I'm, 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 I am sowing the seeds in the Chicago. There's going to be a whole bunch of Peter Boyles being born in the next few years. And McKay's like, that's disgusting. He's like, what about you? You got a nice little hot little, uh, little slice back home and he's like I got a slice I mean I, I have this I met this one girl this woman and her daughter they moved in next to me and I really liked them and he's like ah you've been taking her out huh he's like well I haven't really took her out yet but I'm going to I'm planning he's like hey man gotta move on that gotta move on that I mean you already know she gets crazy by the way there's a lot a shit ton of sexual references in this show I mean Pierre Bull he's, he's got one for every other scene this is like Jesus Christ and as a dog thank you Mr. Hominator for the five minutes. bits for the broads <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. Hominator. Thank you. And I hope you're having a fantastic Saturday evening. And so McKay's just like, I, I, I just, I don't want to talk about it. He's like, oh, man, you just got to go uh, go over and sow your oats. You'll enjoy yourself. He's like, stop talking about it that way. But while this is all going on, Chad, the TM killer is there. The TM killer is there, Chad. And he stabs this woman. He's stabbing the shit out of her, Chad. And he takes the money. He's like, ah, there he goes. There he goes. And McKay, he exits the vehicle. And, and fucking Peter Bull's like, I'll drive down and so, so we can cut him off. And so Peter Boyle, Chad, he drives the fucking car uh, while McKay tries to cut him off. But the, the bad guy gets in his car, Chad, and he drives away. But thankfully, Peter Boyle, he's blocked off the road. So the guy is going to come right at him, Chad, and he's got his gun on. He's got his fucking hand cannon, Dirty Harry style. And he's ready for it. But oh, no, the bulldog, Chad, the bulldog is so stupid that it doesn't know what's happening. So it gets out of the car, just wandering out in the road, just like waddling as it does, Chad. It's like, I don't know what the fuck's going on, but I'm enjoying myself. And Peter Boyle is like, no. He doesn't have a name of the dog, by the way. He's like, no. Oh, and then we watch Peter Boyle, who who looks to be 75 at the, at the youngest in this show, pick up this dog. The dog's like, like by its like by its front legs, and he manages it to, he throws it, he throws it. 
uh, uh, out of the way chat as he is hit by the fucking TM killer chat. That guy just goes, Wah! boom. Got him. The ATM killer fucking nailed him, chat. And he's like, Gah! he's like on the fucking window. He like part of his like stomach explodes, chat, because he's got a big old bloated belly because it's full of the gas. He's he's like Watto. He kind of looks. He's got like that big bloated Watto belly, and it you know, and it kind of pops a little bit. And the killer, he he throws him off the car, and Peter Boyle is dying there in the fucking street shed. All of his guts just leaking out. His insides are his outsides now. And then McKay, he comes over there, and he's like, fucking shit, Peter Boyle. And Peter Boyle is just like, wait a minute before I die. I have this coupon from Domino's. <laughs> What's if the fucking Domino's? It's America's favorite pizza. Well, actually, he has two tickets for a fucking, uh, 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 what was it? Uh, seats. Some of the best seats for uh, Cubs Stadium, chat. Gonna go see a Cubs game. Box seats, matter of fact, where you get all the food and shit. I want you to have these because I don't think I'm gonna be able to, to enjoy this. So you have that. You take that hot young slice, that nice broad that you met, and maybe you could sneak the kid in somehow. I don't know you're gonna sneak the kid. You'll let the kid in. They don't give a shit. You get him in there. You have a nice time. And he's like, oh, I'm dying. And the fucking dog comes up, chat, and he starts eating the innards of pure boil. <laughs> Just like, oh, it's all delicious. He rubs himself in it. But when, when he's done rubbing himself in the insides of Peter Boyle, chat, Peter Boyle and the dog, they lock eyes, chat. They lock eyes. And they're like, there's an understanding, chat, of, of, of like what's happening here. Like the relationship, even though it was, it was short time, like they loved each other, chat. They loved each other for a lifetime. They understood. They're both ugly, smelly, uh, gassy creatures. <laughs> they're both like bog monsters, chat. They're both swamp monsters. And they bonded over that fact. And, and then the wind, the wind just passes by both of them, Chad. And Peter Boyle, he, uh, he keels over, Chad. He keels over. And the dog also falls over. It's like, what happened to the dog? We don't know, Chad. The dog, I think, died of just sadness. Seeing his fellow swamp creature, Peter Boyle, also die. And then, Chad, you know, McKay, he's at the funeral. Thank you, by the way, Dark Shadows. This stream is sponsored by Domino's. Hell yeah, I would take that sponsorship. But they were at the funeral chat, and he, you know, Peter Boyle, you know, everyone's sad that the ATM killer got him chat. Uh, he is given profuse praise from the angry black police chief chat. Uh, everyone from all, all, all the police departments across uh, Chicago chat, all the precincts, they all came there to honor him. Accolades after accolades, speeches after speeches chat. He was the best police officer ever chat. He was so good. And McKay, McKay, he now, he stands before the grave of, of Puchinski, Stanley Puchinski. He understands, like, he tried to impart such wisdom on me about Bain and Broads and sneaking children <laughs> into, into Cubs Stadium for baseball games that I didn't, I didn't appreciate him while he was alive. And I'm sorry I couldn't be there to help you, Puchinski, but I swear to you, I will track down your killer. And then from nowhere, chap behind him says, you better fucking get him for me because I'm, I'm going to fucking kill the guy, the bastard. And he's like, who the fuck said that? And he's like, he's like, then he hears it again. It's me. Stanley Puchinski. He's like, what? What? And he's like looking around, and then Stanley Puchinski's dog shed. He sees it's right by his leg, and he looks down, and the thing, this thing, chat, starts talking. He's like, it's me. I'm a bulldog now. He's like, what? <laughs> T Mac, thank you. That's right, T Mac. He says, "Surprise! It's your partner, Puchinski." <laughs> oh, Puchinski poops all the time in this episode. He's pooping so much. But this is what he fucking looks at. Now, before we saw like a regular bulldog, very cute, very adorable, very smushed in, mutated face. Love it. But this is what Peter Boyle looks like as the dog. Fucking horrifying. They use a animatronic puppet. For a lot of the conversation sees when Peter Boyle is talking, and this thing has just a, a soulless face. So we assume, we assume, chat, that in the moment when Peter Boyle died, his soul possessed the dog. I don't fucking know. Like, like he took over. Maybe the dog both died, but they got a mix up, and he went inside the dog chat where he now resides. He resides there for some reason, and it, all the emotion out of that dog's face was just stripped from it. Where you look in this fucking thing's eyes is like that thing has the blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. That's like that's some Michael Myers, Doctor Loomis shit right there. I'm like, ah, that's not the goose. I, I don't like that. I don't know what the fuck that's about. And and the thing is though, McKay he sees this and he's just like, okay, he goes along with it. <laughs> he's fucking. He's like, I mean, I'm kind of freaked out by this, but 
I mean, we only have 29 minutes in this episode, so I'm just gonna go like, okay, you're you're a dog now, and he's completely fine with this. Well, he fucking he takes but he takes good old Stanley Puchinski home and the rest of the episode, chat. T Mac, thank you, thank you so much for the five biddies. They definitely didn't uh, get the Jim Hans. No, they did not. No. Mikachu, thank you for the 58 biddies. Appreciate that. I've never heard of this Puchinski. Oh, it's well, I'm telling you right now. I'm I'm. I am telling you the tale of Stanley Puchinski when he when he was once a a smelly bloated farting man and he has now turned into a smelly bloating farting bulldog. So there's not much of a change in all hindsight when you look at a chat. But the rest of this episode, I mean, I'll go over the details. But the rest of this episode, chat, is just. Peter Boyle is Puchinski doing dog things. It's him barking. It's him talking about humping ladies. Uh, it's, it, it, it's, it's him making pun after pun after pun. And McKay going, Puchinski, don't do that. Puchinski, you're driving me crazy. It's all that's oh, That's all it is. Afterwards. There are some good scenes, though, that, I, that gave me a chuckle chat. Not in the way they intended, but I was like, okay. <laughs> We're going to cover these. But he fucking takes Puchinski home, chat, because he doesn't know what to do with him. Because, you know, uh, Puchinski, he wants to find his killer, chat. He wants to find uh, the person who was responsible for murdering him and having his soul stuck inside of a bulldog's body. And McKay's just like, I'm, I'm taking off the case. He's like, fuck him, all right? Well, we, we got to do this my way or the highway, son, all right? And he used to take me off of cases all the time. But I'm the one who, uh, who caught the panty serial killer. I caught the mail bomber. I busted all the major drug lords in, in Chicago, okay? These streets are protected because of me. And I'm still going to protect these streets with you or without you. So you're going to help me? And, and you know, McKay's face is like, I, I guess I have to help you. Okay. And so he takes Peter Boyle back to his home where he runs into the the broad that Peter Boyle told him to take to the Cubs game. I forget the, what her name is uh, Franny. Her name is Franny Reynolds chat. And she is a small child. She's a small child. And, um, uh, they bump into each other, and McKay says, oh, it's because he's talking the fucking dog. And I guess no one else, I guess people can hear him. I don't know. I don't know if it's like a, it's like he can only understand the dog or anyone else can understand. Which I don't know. It doesn't matter. But he's talking to the dog at one point. And, you know, you know Franny's like, oh, hi, McKay. He's like, oh, Franny, good to see you. And then Peter Bull's like, oh, it's the hot young broad. Oh, she looks good. She looks good. Like, he looks like she, she's in that kinky, weird shit. He's like, shut up, shut up, shut up. And, you know, she's like, you know what? Uh, I just want to come stop by and say hi. You're just, you're so nice to me and my daughter. And the daughter's like, oh, my God, puppy. And, you know, she goes down. She pets uh, Puchinski. And Puchinski's like, oh, she's adorable. Look at how she pets me. Why don't you pet me like that, McKay? Why don't you pet me that like that? It's terrible that you don't pet me. Look at this little girl. She's the best. She's the best. She's, she's great for you. This is what you need, buddy. And, you know, McKay's just like, ah, you know, I've just been really busy, but happy, happy to help you. Always happy, you know, to, to be very neighborly. And uh, she's like, I didn't know you had a dog. He's like, oh, yeah, just just got the dog. I mean, technically it's not my dog, but it's it's a weird situation. And so then he goes into his apartment, goes in apartment chat, and Puchinski, he just, just starts fucking everything up. You know, he's going up on the couch, and McKay says, get off the couch, Puchinski. And Puchinski's like, fuck you, I'm gonna get on this fucking couch if I wanna get on this goddamn couch. I may look like a dog to you, but I'm still the bloated, farting, smelly swamp creature that I was before. So leave me alone. And so he starts turning on the, the cartoon chat where we're seeing talking dogs. It's like, hi, because he's a talking dog, and the dogs on TV are talking. It's like, whoa, it's like an Inception chat. It's so so meta, so original. And but you know, McVay is just like, ah, stop it, stop it. I don't want to watch that. Puchinski is like, it's funny, it's real funny. I want to watch. And they're arguing back and forth. And then he hears a knock on the door. Chip. By the way, only minutes have passed by. And he hears a knock on the door, opens the door, and uh Fanny, uh, she apparently has bought food and dog food for Puchinski chat. Um and she says, like, I thought you might need some dog food and some groceries. He's like, how'd you do that so fast? She's like, I don't know. We only have about 10 minutes left in the episode, so this is what I got. And so she's like, let me help you put these in. He's like, oh, thank you so much. 
and she just walks in and she just decides that she's gonna make dinner. And Pujinsky's like, oh, she's good. I bet she's a great cook. That's what you gotta do. Marry this broad, okay? Marry this broad, put a baby in her, and ah, oh, she can make all the food for you. This is the best thing ever. And McVeigh's like, shut the fuck up. And you know, he's like putting Pachinsky like in the closet and shit, and you know, trying to, you know, but he gets out, of course. And then he goes to the the, sp- the stereo system shit. He goes to the stereo system and he puts on this love song, which Peter Bull was singing earlier because of talking about all the all the women he used to sleep with, uh, all the, all the ladies of the night he used to um, acquire chat. And he's like, "Someone will love you." Like, he does this whole thing. People are like, you know, Fran- Fanny and her daughter, are like, who has that lovely voice? I've never heard the song sing that way. And he's like, "Oh, nothing. It's nothing." Uh, and then he goes to the the living room and Pachinski is. He's like, "Pachinski," but pachinski has gone, chat. Pachinski has gone, and he goes into his bedroom because he hears some some wrestling going on in there. Chad, you see, hears some wrestling, and inside the room, Pachinski has has defecated. He has defecated all over the bedroom floor. It's everywhere. <laughs> it's it's not just like a one little one little you know like one little poop and like a no. It's like it was just I can't I can't even describe it. it. It's just like it's like if you took like a jar of peanut butter. And you just you, you just took out big scoops and you just start spreading it all over the carpet. That's the only way I can describe this <laughs> for what I just saw. <laughs> So he's like, oh, my God. And then, you know, Pachinski, he's tearing up the bed because he's so mad. Uh, he's like, ah. But then the Franny is just like, everything okay in there? And he goes back to Franny. He says, oh, everything's fine. Everything's fine down here. How are you? And uh, But then he goes back to check on Pachinski. He's no longer in the bedroom. Instead, uh, he goes to the, uh, the, the bathroom. And they have like a heart-to-heart on, the, on each side of the door. But Pachinski, he's, he's like, don't treat me like a goddamn animal. And, you know, uh, McVeigh, he's just like, listen, I didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry I yelled at you. You did shit over my carpet. So that's kind of disappointing. Can I come in? And he comes in, chat, and we see fucking Peter Boyle. We see this again, this fucking thing looking into a mirror, and it's horrifying. And Peter Boyle goes, oh, my God. It's finally setting in. I'm a dog. He, did he? He's, at this point, it's settling in that he's a dog. I don't know why he's just like, um... Yeah, before I was just kind of with it, but now I'm just like, holy shit, I am a dog. And McVeigh's like, Lixon, Puchinski, I, I want, I want to help you out. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna stop. We're gonna, we're gonna get your killer. Okay, and he's like, I like you, I like you, kid, I like you, McKay. Uh, let's go to the police precinct the next day. So that's what they go the next day. Chad, go to the police precinct, and uh, they run into like their rival detective. I don't know what his name is. I think his name is Sergeant Shriver. So that's a sound like a bad guy named Sergeant Shriver. And he was always very mean to uh, McKay and also Puchinski. uh, Puchinski would always make fun of him. And he wasn't invited to the funeral chat. And, um, you know, McKay's walking with the dog and Shriver's just like, oh, look at you, the the would-be, you know, uh, detective coming in here. You're not welcome here, McKay. He's like, I'll go where I want to go, Shriver. I'm going to catch my partner's killer. You ain't going to catch shit. And then, and then, chat, when he says that, Puchinski proceeds to defecate and piss all over his goddamn uh, uh, shoes and uh, pant leg. He's like, what the fuck? And then, and then we hear Peter Bull go, <laughs> so he's having a great time. And then at this point, he's like, okay, I'm going to go talk to the angry black police chief and try to get back on the case to find your, your killer. And he goes, great, put me over there with Karen. She's got the big bazoongas. And he's like, I'm not going to put you over with Karen who has the big, it's not, it's not right. No, let's just do it. She can take care of me. But then Karen, yeah, with the big bazoongas, she comes over and she's like, oh my God, you have a dog. He's so cute. He goes, yeah, damn right, I'm cute. And she picks him up, chat. And Peter Boyle, <laughs> then proceeds to hump the hell out of her breasts for the next five minutes while McVeigh, or McKay, whatever the fuck his name is, goes and talks to the angry black police chief, Chad. So we'll cut back to him going, oh, 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 just enjoying himself, Chad. While McKay asks the angry black police chief, saying, sir, uh, I guess his, the, the, his name is Captain Ed Martin, Chad, but he's the angry black police chief. You know what I'm talking about. And he goes, sir, I would like to go back in the case and find my partner's killer. And the, and the, and the guy goes... I, you know what? I see the dedication. I see Puchinski's teachings in you now. And he's just happy for some reason. I don't know why the the captain, the 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 the, the chief chat is so goddamn happy. He's just like, oh, it's so good to see you. It's like, what the fuck? What's going on? Shouldn't this department just be in mourning? Like, Puchinski died yesterday. So I don't know. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Thank you, T-Mac, for another five minutes. Puchinski basically sexually assaulted. He, she, he sexually assaulted that woman. Oh, it's not even over yet. And he's like, I'll sign you to his murder. 
you go ahead and stake out that ATM, which apparently no one's doing that, and the guy's just been stabbing old, you know, old ladies all the goddamn day, taking their money. You're assigned to it, and catch him, catch him, bring justice to Stanley Puchinski. And then Chad is uh, McKay. He exits. He exits the 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 the, the chief's office. Chad uh, Puchinski has now thrusted so hard that Karen falls out of her chair. Chad is on the floor. It's just like what is this? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, who is that, Chad? Oh, Trash Comics. Thank you for the follow. You're my Huckleberry. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing very well today. So now, Chad, so now, uh, Puchinski and McKay, they are now on stakeout. Very similar to, to the, you know, the, the, the only uh, a few minutes ago, Chad, before Peter Boyle, he, went, he died. It was pretty much the same thing. He's just as gassy and bloated and gross as he was before, Chad. And, but, oh, no, they, they spot the killer, Chad. They, he, he was trying to stab an old lady, but he was like mid-stab, and they got the drop out of him. And McKay, he's chasing the killer down the sidewalk, Chad, and he corners him in an alleyway. While Pochinski, he goes around because he wants revenge. He wants vengeance, Chad. And McKay, he's, he's a fucking pushover, Chad. He couldn't win a fight to save his goddamn life. And the ATM killer, Chad, the serial killer, uh, he's beating the shit. He's just beating the every living shit on McKay. And so Peter Boyle goes, fuck it, I got to get in there and help my boy. And so then, Chad... He does the thing that would naturally happen in a situation like this. Uh, he, you know, he, he corners the killer, chat and proceeds to chew his penis and balls off, Chad. No more peen, no more balls. And this is the scene just right before he bites down. You can see this is the man's crotch here. You see where the, his hands are, chat Right there, he's trying to protect himself. But Peter Boyle, or Pachinski, Stanley Pachinski, Chad, the bulldog, he bites his fingers, and he, the guy goes, ah! Like, he, he's in pain, so he lifts his hand up and then Puchinski proceeds to nom on the his his murderers uh peen and balls chat and um uh, the, the, he bites him off, and the killer is is he, it's not we're, we're not sure if the killer is apprehended or he dies. I mean, when you fucking sever the the pain and ball shit, a lot of blood goes there, so he could have bled out. But um, because of their incredible police work of either murdering or apprehending the ATM killer Chad, who had his penis and balls bit off, uh, Puchinski is inducted into the police department. Uh, as the leader of their K-9 unit, and he will remain a partner uh, to McKay uh, for his tenure at the precinct. And so now, uh, Puchinski lives with McKay, chat, and they're bonding over their shared experiences. But, oh, no! Uh, Puchinski, he, he wants more food, and he proceeds to then defecate on the carpet and pee everywhere, and McKay goes, oh, Puchinski! And the episode ends. <laughs> I got that crotch you. Very much that crotch you, chat. And that, my friends, that is episode one, the only episode, chat, the series, if you will, of Puchinski. <laughs> Better than sex. <laughs> now everybody's like, boo. I know. I want to keep reviewing the show. I'm like, I want to see what happens next. And we'll never know, chat. This show is 30 years old. We're never going to get another episode. But I think we could resurrect this. We could do more episodes, chat. t Alex, bravo. Thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed that review. If I were to rate this, <laughs> I would probably go, man, uh, it's somewhere between like a fuck you and a, and a some old bullshit. The thing is, though, chat, because I was so tickled by how awful it was and just the look of this fucking animatronic dog was just like, how are you trying to sell it? It looks horrifying. I don't know if I can even give it some old bullshit. It, 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 maybe it's like a high some old bullshit. It's a some old bullshit with like, you need to watch this to understand like what what this is to get the full context. I mean, I think I'm going to go with some, oh, some old dog shit. I think that's what the, that's the appropriate writing. Some old dog shit. Miss Allie, Miss Bowties, welcome back to the stream. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing okay. Good to see you here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Where are the hoes at? Welcome. Anyone playing Call of Duty? I'm on PlayStation. There you go. And then anyone wants to play uh, PlayStation, Jen? There you go. Poop, chin, poop, chin, see, poop. Because he poops everywhere. He defecates like all the time. There you go. See many of the seven biddies. Critically, it's a sum of bullshit. But if you enjoy the writing, uh, watching bad TV, it's a man. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, because like, it's so bad that it becomes good again. He's like, how is this happening? In a way, it's a matinee. But if like critically, I give it some old bullshit, some old dog shit, if you will. Oh, thank you, Darksaber, with another five biddies. That dog is not dog is goddamn nightmare view. No, thank you guys for all your your generosity during the review. In case I missed you again, thank you for the biddies. Thank you for the subscriptions. Really do appreciate. Six needs six seasons and a movie. I need, but but gotta recast Peter Boyle though. Like you can get. 
Chat, you can bring back most of the cast. You can bring back George Newbern as Detective Robert McKay. You can, his captain is uh, Frank McRae. Is he still alive? I want to. I hope he's still alive, chat. He is. Uh, he is still alive, chat. He is still alive, and you can get him as the angry black police chief. You'll. You will have to recast Peter Boyle, though. Sadly, um, I will chat. I will play Pupchinsky. I will make the sacrifice, chat. I will take on the role that Peter Boyle was destined to play for six seasons as a movie, okay? I will, you know, I'm going to give some money to his estate. I'll absolutely give, absolutely give money to his estate, chat, but I will take it upon myself, on my shoulders, chat, to play the smelly, farting, bloated, swamp creature bulldog that Peter Boyle should have played, chat. I will do it. I will do it. I already got the voice down, chat. <laughs> Do Corey Martin know about this? If so, you've got to tell them about it. I got to let them know. I got to let them know about Puchinski chat. Maybe they can do their own review of it. <laughs> oh, man. We could talk shit about Chris Hayden. Okay, we can do that. And, uh, there was, actually, I like the little girl in, this, in this, uh, this episode. She was fine. She likes Stanley Pucci. She says he's smelly and gross, but I love him. And I was like, oh, that's cute. <laughs> Well, of Chris just wants to hump the big T reception. I mean, you know, sacrifice had to be made, shit. I am. I, I, it's, it's the it's the it's the work of an actor. I mean, I got to do it. If I got to do it, I got to do it. <laughs> but it just needs to be played the same way as Wilfred was. Yes, yes. Oh my God, yes. Do it that way. So it's like a reboot, shit. Maybe they just don't even acknowledge it. <laughs> so it's just like now they should have just had Peter Boyle. That would have been fucking brilliant. If if Peter Boyle is just in a bulldog costume. <laughs> That would have been great. Yes. Oh, my fucking God. I will be in that show. I will do this right now. Uh, whoever was involved, the, the producer, the guy that did Jingle Jingle Away, sir, I will do it. Let's fucking do it, okay? <laughs> gotta get, because we'll obviously move for the times. We gotta get consent, but the humps will still be in there now, Brownie. Absolutely. But for consensual humps, consensual humps. Absolutely. Chris confirmed method now. Goddamn right, I'll do it. I will wear the dog suit, chair. You paying me for that? Fuck yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> Fuck yeah, it's worth it. <laughs> oh my God. Well, chat. Again, I hope you really enjoyed the. I gotta go back and read some of the comments. Some of the people are like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I'm like, what did I walk into? <laughs> <laughs> oh, T Mac making the seven biddies. <laughs> oh my god. To break it up a little bit, you could push Cop Rock and I Zombie back to make room for the person who, who bought the reviews tonight. Oh, okay, great. I need you to do Tequila and Benetti next week and the Year of Santa Claus before Christmas. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Then we can do that. Thank you. That's very generous of you, T Mac. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you for the biddies as well. Oh, but chat. Thank you again. I'm going to go ahead and take a quick break, chat. I'm going to go ahead and refill my beverage. In the meantime, please entertain yourselves amongst yourselves, chat. We'll be moving on to some Apex Legends and Among Us later on in the stream. But for now, stick around, chat. I'll be right back. <laughs> 